Hey, this is Chris. Uh, now 2022 was a pretty tough year for share markets as we all know. A lot of people are unfortunately now holding on to stocks that have fallen and some more than others. A lot of tech shares are down 50, 60, 80%. Cryptocurrencies are the same. So a question we get from some clients is when should I be selling the losers in my portfolio? I'm finding it really difficult to do. Should I hold on to them? Should I, should I wait until they go back to break even or should I dump them out of my portfolio? So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about three behavioral attributes that have been well studied in behavioral finance that are probably leading you to hold on to your losers and actually what harm it could be causing to you and how you can actually get around uh, this problem. So uh, loss aversion is this idea that people feel a lot of pain when they take losses. Now it's been well studied in behavioral finance and the studies show that people feel the pain of losses two to three times more than they feel enjoyment from wins. So it's understandable, it's a really tough thing to do taking a loss on a share or something else that you've bought. Now, unfortunately, this leads to a lot of people holding on to losses, not because they haven't made losses on them, but because there's a belief that people have deep inside them that you're actually not taking the loss unless you crystallize it or unless you sell it. So people hold on to these things, hoping that they'll get back up and, and hoping that they won't actually need to crystallize this loss. Now, this has been you know, well studied as well, and it's known as the disposition effect which is that people are less likely to sell losers and more likely to sell winners because they really feel that attachment to losers and they wanna, wanna hold on to them until they're winners again. Um, and, in, and related to this is actually something called anchoring, which is that people tend to anchor to a certain price even though it may make no logical sense while they anchor to it. So really, the share market doesn't know what price you bought a share at. No one really knows apart from you. And yet people seem to have some really deep-seated psychological attachment to their purchase price. And we see this a lot in the share market. People anchor to the price that they bought something at. So when they do eventually break even on it, um, they are very happy to sell it. And, and this doesn't make a lot of sense for, for people as well. And the reason I think that um, this loss aversion, but as well as that, the disposition effect and anchoring can be dangerous when it comes to holding on to losers, is that we know from the mathematics of the share market that most companies are losers. That's just the way it works. In fact, over the last 100 years, about 7% of companies have generated all of the wealth and all of the returns in the share market, and 93% of companies have been losers. So the chances are in your portfolio, you've probably got more losers than winners, and that's why it's so important that you actually avert this disposition effect and be conscious that you know, holding on to losers isn't healthy for your portfolio. Um, and it also leads me to my next point, which is around index funds. So one of the sort of hidden beauties, I think, of index funds is that they're constantly in this process of renewal where they're downweighting losers, upweighting winners, and when things become such losers that they become such a small part of the index, they actually get dumped out of the index. And so the index has been able to make a great return over the long run because it's constantly recycling by selling the losers and holding on to and upweighting the winners. So. I think one of the safest ways to actually help you evade these issues around holding on to losers is by avoiding individual stocks, which are gonna likely put you in this position. Um, and as well as individual stocks, I find a lot of people have this same issue with active fund managers. They'll invest in an active fund manager and there are some big names at the moment have, that have seen a lot of this. They invest at them at the wrong time, but think, well, eventually their performance has got to turn around. I'll wait until they've had a good year before I sell. You know, this is equally dangerous. Um, again, I think the safest way to approach this is actually by not taking picks when it comes to stocks, not picking active fund managers as well, investing in the whole market index that is constantly recycling and constantly evolving out of losers into winners because that actually prevents you from making this mistake and ensures that you're constantly owning the winners in your portfolio and the losers are slowly getting drip fed out of your investments. Um, and so that's one tip I have for people this year that have lost a lot of money on individual shares is, it's a great lesson of the dangers of, of, of holding on to losers and actually another, rec another reason why index funds are such a great long-term investment.